Like me, I'm sure you've tried to cure your tiredness with a good night's rest, but then you've still woken up feeling absolutely exhausted. And if that's the case, it's because more often than not, sleep doesn't always equal rest. In fact, there's seven different types of rest that we can get. And in this video, I wanna share with you those seven different things that we can do and implement into our lives so that we can feel a lot more energized and a lot more awake throughout the day. First one is physical rest. Now this does include sleeping, but it also includes physical activity that's very relaxing. Things like yoga, things like, you know, massage therapy, all these different things fit into physical rest. Now, specifically on sleep, in Matthew Walker's book, Why We Sleep, Walker pretty much suggests that teenagers, they need eight to 10 hours per night and adults on average need about seven to nine hours. It is something that is incredibly important for our energy levels and our alertness throughout the day. In fact, if you're someone that struggles to fall asleep, I highly recommend checking out this video over here where I pretty much go through exactly what I do to help me fall asleep. I pretty much fall asleep in under two minutes. So if you wanna have a look at how I do that, make sure you check this out. Anyway, other than sleep, all these physical exercises that we do like yoga and all that stuff that I mentioned before, those are restorative exercises. It helps you pretty much stretch out your limbs. It helps you pretty much get into your body a little bit so that your body feels a lot more awake and it feels like you just do a lot more things throughout the day. You'll also feel like pockets of energy will open up because you simply have a little bit more flexibility and you're a little bit more loose. The second type of rest is mental rest. This is giving your mind pretty much the space to just relax. Now, the ways that we can do this is we can take short, regular breaks throughout the day, whether we are at work or whether we are you know, studying. It's really important that we take those breaks. And in those breaks, it's super, super healthy if we like use it wisely. Not that we jump on our phones and we get sucked into all these like different types of stimuli, right? But we actually perhaps maybe go for a walk outside. Maybe we pet our dog for a little bit. Maybe we like, you know, take a few deep conscious breaths and kind of bring our minds back to the present moment. In fact, sometimes we can actually get disturbing thoughts that come to our mind throughout the day and also before we sleep. And a really good way of dealing with this is to write down those disturbing thoughts, like whatever it may be, right? We physically write it down, close the book, and then that way we can deal with it later. It just frees up our mind. It means that our minds are not cluttered. And that's how we can get some mental rest. Third type of rest that we need is sensory rest. Day in, day out, our senses are getting stimulated pretty much all the time. From light, from our phones, our tablets, our iPads, our computers, like from the, from the television, like our senses are getting stimulated pretty much all the time. Sometimes I actually even find myself sitting on the couch on my phone, on my laptop while I'm watching TV. Like there is so much stimuli that can be hitting us at any point in time. We need to make sure that we dedicate our time elsewhere away from those devices and all these different things that really trigger our senses to be like pretty much overactive. And believe it or not, sometimes sensory rest can also involve just being away from people for a bit. And one of the best ways to do this is to be intentional with our time. We can intentionally put our devices away, switch off from the world and engage with activities that don't overwhelm our senses. For example, switching off your phone and grabbing a book and doing a bit of stretching. Things like taking a couple of minutes just to breathe. You'll actually find that you might get a little bit more out of the day as well. The day is just stop being like, go, 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 go. Like switch it from this task to that task. You'll end up having like small, pockets of like mindfulness kind of like sprinkled throughout your day, which kind of just allows us to kind of slow down and like really take in our day and like purposely live it rather than let it being dictated by all the things that we're doing and we're engaged in. The fourth type of rest that a lot of us need is creative rest. This is needed to like re-inspire, re-energize ourselves, like the creative part of ourselves so that we can do our work with a lot more enthusiasm. And one of the really awesome ways that we can do this is we make our environment our own. We surround our environment with things that we enjoy and that re-energizes us. Creative rest could involve you going for a walk in nature or it could be, you know, having a mad ass desk set up that you really enjoy and you really love working at. For me, my desk kind of provides that creative rest when I need it. Like when I've done short bursts of work or like really sometimes really long bursts of work, I kind of just sit back in my chair and just like take pretty much everything that's on the desk and like, you know, the LED lights and all the posters that are around me. Like I kind of just take it all in and I feel re-inspired so that when I'm in that break, I'm kind of refueling my energy. And then when I want to go back into that work, I have a lot more enthusiasm and a lot more alertness and a lot more 
presence to what it is that I'm doing. Occasionally, I like going down to the beach as well and just like laying in the water. I found that the water kind of helps my, like helps clear my mind and like unclutters it. So like thoughts and ideas can just flow through me. And I just find that's a really, like a really, like it's just an experience that I really value and like kind of, yeah, like just rejuvenates me. Another type of rest we need is emotional rest. Now when things happen in our lives, big or small, emotions get attached to them. And sometimes when it's an emotion that we deem as negative, right, we feel like, you know, we can't talk about it. So then we just keep it within ourselves. And then eventually, after a couple more experiences, we find that these emotions eventually start building up and starts filling up that bottle that's inside of us. Emotional rest is you giving like your heart the space to breathe. It's about you having vulnerable and authentic conversations with people that are close to you. When we do this, we don't have have surface level conversations. We have conversations that are a lot more deeper. And this is where we start leaning on each other. And this is where we can start taking out all those emotions and start expressing ourselves a little bit more. And then at the end of the day, we end up feeling, or like at the end of the conversation, those conversations, we end up feeling a lot lighter. So if you want that emotional rest, talk about those things that usually go unsaid. I know it's hard and it takes a lot of courage. Then have that within yourself, build that trust with someone special, whoever it is, could be a best mate of yours, could be a partner, and have those conversations that are difficult to have. And trust me, you'll end up feeling so much better. Now onto the next type of rest we need, social rest. Now this is like, this is super important because I'm I'm a very social person. And what I find is, is that sometimes I end up hanging around a lot of people that kind of drain my energy. What you want to do is you want to hang around people that just give out good vibes. Believe it or not, we can like lose so much energy by hanging around people that are just like energy vampires. They like pretty much suck all our energy out of the tank. And so we feel like we've got nothing left to like, nothing left in the tank for ourselves. Be in the company of people that energize you, that support you and make you feel valued. That's how you get that social rest. And look, your social circle doesn't have to be that big. Right? It can be like just a small bunch of people. In fact, my circle like comprises of, you know, like me, myself, and I. Um, I'm kidding. I have, I have friends, guys, relax. I've got like two or three close friends that I'm like really connected with that I use not only for like emotional rest, but also social rest as well. Now the seventh and last type of rest I wanna share with you is spiritual rest. Now spirituality can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But in the way Dr. Sandra Dalton Smith puts it, it is the type of rest that fosters a deeper sense of belonging, love and acceptance with ourselves and pretty much the world around us as well. And I know for me, my spiritual rest is like me doing my sadhana. It's me getting my meditation done. It's me going for walks in nature. It's basically practices that rejuvenate my soul. Now, yours may be the same, yours might be quite similar, or it could be completely different. Whatever it is that rejuvenates your spiritual soul, right, that is spiritual rest. So whatever it is, factor it into your daily routine so that your higher self gets that love and gets that connection. All right, guys, that's it. Those are the seven types of rest. As you can see, like our body, our soul, our mind, everything, every single part of us needs different types of rest. And I'm hoping you can implement one of these into your life this week, and which, whichever one it is. Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear how it worked out for you. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it and you subscribe to the channel. I'll definitely see you in the next one. Bye.